Welcome back for part two of the 2008 Acura MDX cylinder head inspection. All right, so we're going to measure the valve guide. I flipped the cylinder head around, so this is four, five, and six. So we're in this hole right here. Have this small hole gauge set by Sterrett. This is what they look like. So you can see there's four different sizes. We're in this range here. The range is in inches. I'm going to take this one out. So 0.200 to 0.300 inches. So how these work, you turn this little dial counterclockwise, it closes it up, and then you turn it clockwise, you can see it flares out. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the top right here first. We just kind of get a little bit of drag on there. We don't want to get it stuck in there. So that's a little too loose. About right there, I think. I'm going to call that good right there. Takes a little bit of uh, practice with these. So we're going to measure this using the micrometer. Now the more precise method of measuring this bore would be using a dial bore gauge. I do not have one of those. They are kind of expensive and I didn't want to spend the money on those just to do the cylinder heads for this car. So I'm going to close this up just until it touches right there. Zero this out. Then we'll open this up. Make sure it's nice and straight. About right there is good. Get a little looser. Yeah. So it keeps coming back to 0 0.21735. So our spec once again is 0.2171 to 0.2177 so we're good okay so we're going to get our middle measurement I'm just going to go all the way in with this should be pretty close to the middle I'm just going to keep it where it was we tighten it up just a little bit just to see here that's pretty good a little bit of drag on it so we're going to get that measurement next Nice and centered in there. I'm going to go 0.2174. All right, so I flipped the cylinder head over. We're looking at this one right here. Again, we're calling this bottom. So I'm going to put this in here. I haven't moved anything. You see, it's kind of loose at the top, and then it quickly narrows as it gets in about, I say, about three eighths of an inch. So that's interesting. I turn it this way you can see it's got kind of an oval shape to it so I'm gonna I'm gonna measure it closer to the top I think I'm gonna call that good right there okay we're gonna call that good right there at 0.2175 so still within our spec again our service limit is 0.219 alright so let's talk about our findings so you can see the measurements for the valve in number five right there. This is a new valve right here. And these are the valve guide measurements. So if you look at all these measurements, what you need to do is take the largest valve guide measurement, which is 0 0.21750, and subtract the smallest valve measurement. So for number five, that would be 0.21430. So if we do that, you can see that comes out to 0 0.00320. Our service limit is 0 0.004. So we are okay there. For a new valve, the smallest measurement is 0.21465. So if we take our new valve, this is our valve guide measurement right here, the largest valve guide measurement, 0 0.21750. Smallest valve stem measurement, 0.21465 we get 0.00285 so that's a little bit 
better clearance than we have right here with 0 .00320. And again, the service limit is 0 .004. So the question is, do we change our valve at this point? Because I think our valve guide, if we look at that, that is within spec. It's in the range of 0.2171 to 0.2177. So these measurements are fine. The question is, because these valve measurements are outside of our standard measurement, even though they're above the service limit, do we change this valve for a new valve? So that's the question that we need to answer. So I drew up a hypothetical. You can see right here, if we were at the service limit of 0.21340, if we subtract that number from 0 0.21750, we'd get 0 0.0041, which is past our service limit. I decided to dispense with a wobble method and just measure all the valve guides, then compare those measurements to the valve stem measurements I'd already taken. Again, I use a stoplight color scheme. Red for past the service limit, yellow for outside the standard or new spec, and green for within spec. All 24 valve guides have the same specs. There were only two spots on the valve guides that were outside the spec, and none approached the service limit. Now that we have the guide measurements, let's look at stem to guide clearances. To calculate the clearance, the lowest of the top, middle, and bottom measurements for a valve stem is subtracted from the highest of the top, middle, and bottom measurements for a valve guide. The specifications are on the right. All clearances are within spec, except for number 5, which was our test subject, and number 17. The clearances with the new valves installed on the exhaust side bring number 5 and number 17 much closer to spec, so it seems like a good idea to replace those two valves to minimize the chances that they'll go out of spec anytime soon. Alright, so one tip I received on the MDXers forum is that sometimes the valve springs can go bad, which causes the valves to not open and close correctly. So here is an exhaust valve spring and an intake valve spring. So this one's got red on it. This one's got blue on it. So we're going to start by measuring what's called the free length, which is the length of the spring in its uncompressed state. So I have a set of digital calipers here. I'm going to turn it on. Make sure it's zeroed out. Open this up. And lightly close that in there. We've got 1.9825 inches. The standard length for these is 2.010 inches, so we are below the standard, but there is no service limit based on the free length. Let's check the intake valve spring. Open this up. Lightly close it, 2.0020 inches. The standard size is 2.0027 inches. So we are below the standard length. Again, there is no service limit for free length. All right, to get some baseline measurements, I bought a brand new valve spring from Honda or Acura. 14762-RJA-003. So this is an exhaust valve spring. That's what I'm most concerned about is the exhaust side of the cylinder head. You can see the blue on there. Brand new. So I'm going to measure the length on this. So it should be 2.010 inches. That's the specification for a new spring. Be careful to not clamp down too hard. I'm going basically the end of the coil here to the end of the coil down here. We'll go 2.0060. So very, very close to our 2.010 specification. All right, so what we're going to do now is measure the pressure of this valve spring in its installed state. The installed state is 1.7205 inches based on my measurements that I've taken off the cylinder head. All right, so here's the tool we're going to use to check our valve spring pressure. It's got this dial on the front that goes from 20 up to 600. So I thought that was a little odd that it starts at 20, but that's where it starts. 
I thought it started at zero. So the press will come down like this. And then there's a bottom part that goes over top of the valve spring. So I've got the digital caliper here. We're, we're going to compress this down to the install height. Get this nice and centered under here. Step back and take a look at it. Turn the gauge your direction too. Got a little ways to go. All right, so it looks like we're just about right on here with the calipers, just about perfect. So I'm calling that good. And our pressure is what? Uh, it looks like it's reading around 35. You could probably hear the surprise in my voice when I read 35 psi. Based on a forum post, most Honda Springs measure over 50 psi. However, the original springs range from 33 to 35 PSI when using the same method to check. I could take these springs to a shop to have them professionally tested, but I'm just going to call them good and move on. Alright, so while I have the engine apart, I figured I'd also do a few more checks, and we're going to take a look at the rocker assembly. So what we want to do is measure the clearance between the rocker shaft and the rocker arm. So I'm just going to take a sampling here. We're going to take this bolt off the end, take this off of here, like so. This is going to be our test subject. And we are going to measure right here where this rocker was sitting. All right, so I have a little more space to measure. I also took this one off. And what I'm going to do is use a micrometer, zero this out. I'm just going to open this up. It's probably somewhere around three quarters of an inch. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to kind of sight down the shaft to make sure I get it right on there. Right on the center, as close as I can. 0 0.78650 is what I got. So we have 0 0.78650 there. Drop this in here. Nice and centered. Straight up and down. And I'm going to lock that in place. Okay, I think that's good right there. So I'm going to measure that now and see how it compares. Got it zeroed out. Nice and straight in there. We're going to call it good right there. 0.78820. All right, so we got 0 0.78820. So we will subtract 0 0.78650. We get 0 0.0017. And our specification, this is the intake side. So our specification is 0 0.0010 to 0 0.0026 inches with the service limit of 0 0.0026. So we are well within range. So that looks good. So we do need to take this rocker and flip this gauge around to check for oval. So we were here, we're going to flip it around like that. Okay, so I'm just going to, I got it flipped around, I'm going to take the tension off of this, let it loose, get it right there, and then we'll tighten this down again. Pull that out, we're going to measure that. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, so it's about the same. 0 0.78820. So that's good. This thing is nice and round, it's, it appears. So we would want to measure it on the bottom side and on the top side just to make sure it's right. But uh, I think I'm not really too worried about the rocker assemblies. I think they're just fine. But I figured while I have the engine open that I might as well do as many checks as possible before I put it all back together. All right, so let's take some measurements on the exhaust side. Take this bolt out, we'll take this off, 
and so this was way over here take the spring off too so we have some clearance some space to measure this uh, the one thing I forgot to mention probably should have measured uh, here and then probably on the bottom like this just like we did with the uh, rocker arm just to make sure that this is not oval also alright so I'm going to go ahead and measure right in this area I'm just going to take one measurement I'm not going to do uh, a measurement here and then flip it over I'm just going to take one measurement I'm just doing a sampling lift this up so I can see it probably somewhere around 0.78 again I would guess or close to it Okay. Let's sight down the end of the shaft. Yep, 0.78635 I'm going to call it. Alright, so this one I'm going to measure more close to the center. Because it doesn't have the ridges like the other one had. Grab our telescoping gauge. Get it more, a little bit closer to the center here. Nice and straight up and down. And I'm going to lock that in place right there, I think. We have 0.78635 for our rocker shaft. That in there, nice and straight. Point seven eight eight seven, I think. It's kind of hard to get this right on. We'll go with that. 0.7887. Okay, so we have 0 0.78870, and then our shaft diameter was 0 0.78635, so the difference is 0 0.00235. The specification on the exhaust side is 0 0.0010 to 0 0.0030 inches, with a service limit of 0 0.0030 inches. So we are in good shape here. So just like with the intake side, we want to also measure perpendicular to the measurement we took and so that's pretty much it I, I'm pretty confident that this rocker assembly is fine I'm not going to worry about it I'm not going to measure every single one of them but that's just one thing you might want to do before you put your engine back together alright so I'm gonna apologize if you hear any wind in the back room we've got a lot of wind kicking up today for some reason but we're just gonna go ahead and move forward here and so what I've done is I've got the camshaft back in here this is the front cylinder head and I've got the cap on the end and I've got a dial indicator set up over here and I've got the plunger basically pressed up against her as you can see if I take that off and I put it back so that's ready to go to measure and what we're measuring is the end play so the movement back and forth of the camshaft now normally you'd want to do this with the rocker assemblies installed but I want to try it this way first see how that looks if it doesn't look good then I'll put the rocker assemblies on and see if that adds some resistance to our camshaft in play so we're gonna go 39 to 50 looks like about 53 39 to 53 so we're gonna call that 0.14 millimeters And the specification on the end play is 0 0.05 millimeters to 0 0.20 millimeters. Service limit is 0 0.20 millimeters. So basically, this end play is within spec, as you can see there. Now, if it weren't in spec, one of the first things you would do is replace this cover here because maybe the cover on the inside is worn a little bit and that could cause the end play to be off a little bit so replace the cover try the end play test again if that's still not right then you would replace the camshaft because maybe the camshaft is worn on the end okay so now we're gonna look at the camshafts As you can see this one's in pretty good shape there's really not much wear on here at all but one test you can do is measure these lobes here So there's five lobes in each one of these areas so these three right here are the intake lobes these two on the outside are the exhaust lobes so how we're going to do this we're going to measure the intake side first so typically you would measure these lobes with a micrometer I don't have a micrometer of this size so I'm going to use my digital calipers it may not be exact but I just want to kind of get an idea of 
what the sizing is on these lobes. It's like 1.433. Okay. Specification is 1.4328. So we are pretty close to our spec measurement there. So that looks good. And then these two, the primary and the secondary, hopefully I got a decent measurement. It's hard to get this lined up, like I said, correctly. Uh, looks like 1.386, 1.385. Spec is 1.3824. So because of the way I'm measuring with the caliper, I'm not getting an exact measurement. So it's, it's pretty close, though. Let's do the same thing on this one. We'll say 1.38. Spec again is 1.3824. So I'm going to call these good. Again, they're not worn very much at all, so it looks pretty good. Then the exhaust side, I'm just going to do one of the exhaust lobes here. It's like 1.438. Spec is 1.4326. So overall, I think our camshaft looks pretty good. There's Visually, it looks fine. Measuring it as much as we can as far as accuracy is concerned, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to call this good. We're going to go ahead and use this in our cylinder head. Okay, so the test we're going to do now is measuring the clearance between the cylinder head and our camshaft. So we're looking at these areas right here. Now, normally you would use a dial bore gauge to do that measurement. It would come in like this. Take a measurement of each one of these here. So one, two, three, and four. I do not have a dial bore gauge, as I've already said. So I'm going to use my telescoping gauge to check the clearance. So once again, this is what it looks like. The one I've chosen, it goes from one and a quarter inches to two and an eighth of an inch. So how we're going to do this, just put this in like that. And we want to make sure that this is straight up and down get it all the way in there like so make sure this is nice and level so it's not tilted like that we want to make sure it's nice and level that looks pretty good right there and then I'm just gonna lock this in place like that So I don't have a micrometer to measure this, so I'm going to measure it with my digital calipers. All right, so let's take our measurement. It's nice and straight there, straight as possible. It's like 1.6930 is what we're getting here. So that was this one here. That corresponds, if you line up our camshaft, lines up with this one here. So we're going to measure that next. All right, so take our calipers and measure that. Try to get this as straight as possible too. Again, I don't have a micrometer this size, so that kind of sucks, but we get do as best we can here. Try to get it as straight on as possible. It's like 1.6905. So we got 1.6905. For this measurement, for the cylinder head measurement, we got 1.6930. So subtracting those numbers, you would get uh, point, what is that, point zero zero two five inches. The spec is point zero zero two zero to point zero zero three five. And the service limit is point zero zero six. So we look pretty good. We're kind of on the low end of the spec, which is really good. We'd also want to check the ovality on the cylinder head, so we did it like this. We want to flip it around and do it like that, take that measurement. All right, so there you have it. There's inspecting the cylinder heads for the 2008 Acura MDX. So I didn't do every single little check on the cylinder heads that I could have done, but I think I did enough to prove that these cylinder heads really are in pretty good shape, and the only things we need to replace at this point are going to be a few exhaust valves. So hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching.